Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at Light Tracer Renderer version 2.1, the most recent release from the folks at Light Tracer. And this is a pretty interesting tool as it actually allows you to render your stuff anyway. So you can go ahead and start rendering whatever you've made either on the web or you can simply download the Mac or the Windows version and start doing some interesting stuff. Now, this actually takes advantage of your GPU and gives you some very premium render. Now, for those who've been thinking about a rendering engine that they can use that would save them a lot of time, that actually makes use of real-time GPU ray tracing to create amazing and stunning images, then this is actually something that you should proceed to check out. And working with this is extremely easy. Now you can choose, like I said earlier, use this on the web, which makes sense. And there's a couple of file format that this supports, which includes GLTF, GLB, OBJ, STL. And at the same time, you can drag and drop in an FBX file. Now with this set, let's dive over and take a look at what the desktop version actually looks like. So with the desktop version open right here, you can see what we have. So from here, we can start uh, creating stuff depending on what we want. And by default, you get this beautiful shader ball that can show you a couple of things that you can do. So taking a look at the UI, how you can uh, walk around, this is extremely, extremely simple as the folks that Light Tracer have actually gone through to modify a couple of things. So right now, if you click on the plus button, you now have a couple of primitives that you can work with that also includes some extra form of geometries that you can use to place and also render good images. And you'd also notice that right over here, we have a scene explorer that makes a lot of sense. And in this case, you can choose to select to delete certain parts. You can also choose to turn this off so it's not visible within the camera. You can also copy the object with reference to the original mesh. Now, if you go ahead and take a look right here, you can see that we have the render progress bar as it travels through and you can play with the amount of samples. Now, if you click on the render button, you can also take a look at the normal, the albedo, the depth, and also the index. So you can simply switch these things just to get what you want and see something pretty interesting. Now, all the way down here, you also notice that we have a brand new environment which we can play with. And from here, we have the library and then we have the view, the properties, and also the rendering. So how do you work with this? once you're trying to create an image. And how you can work with this is very simple. All you need to do is click right here and load the scene. Or if you've already downloaded a model, you can click, drag and drop directly within your viewport. And in this case, we're just going to say we'd like to replace with what we have. So we're going to click this as automatic, click on replace and get this model right in. Now this model is made available by an amazing artist on Sketchfab. And I'm also going to go ahead and link it in the description so you guys will be able to find it. And this is a pretty well done model that you can use. So with this model here, you can see that we have this real time ray tracing going on and uh, it looks really cool. So let's put a platform to this, you know, click on the plus sign, go all the way down. Maybe we're just going to drop this in there and uh, that looks pretty nice already. If we would like to resize this, we can. So I can actually undo what we have and I can click on the scene floor and just simply move this to the point which I want. And in this case, if we'd like to just, you know, scale this down, we can click to close that, click on this button, go over to where we have a scale and we can choose to use this to scale it or you can use what you have here on the viewport. So you can choose to use the widget on your viewport to scale this up and also scale this down depending on what you're going for. And in this case, the next thing you probably want to do is to start texturing this. If you already have a texture, that makes so much sense because at this point you can just simply go wild with it. But if you don't, you can always Go over to the library where you can see a truckload of materials that exist. So you can go from plastic to metal to glass to cars, ceramic, cloth, light, and others. So in this case, if we'd like to throw in some hard metals on this, we can also go in and uh, we can select the silver metal. And let's drop this in and that looks good. Let's actually try some plastic red. You know, okay, that doesn't look bad. And you can see real quick, this is just uh, giving us that quick sampling as it's going. Click, drag and drop, and you can see that you can actually change this, and that doesn't look bad. All right, this looks extremely cool. If we'd like to change the lighting, we can go over to where we have the environment, click on the Manage Map section, and we can switch this lighting and, you know, see how cool this is. Real quick, you're clicking and you're getting pretty good results, and this doesn't look bad. So let's click one more time, and we can make changes, and you can see how cool this is. Now, if you like to play with a gradient, let's say that's the kind of lighting you're going for, click on this button and you have a gradient and you can play with the gradient color however you want. You know, the freedom is all yours and you can do these things. And uh, this would get you very quick renders. And I think a tool like this is best once you're trying to do, you know, more like a product rendering, rendering of some sort like this, 
this will definitely come in handy. Now, if you don't want to have any of this, you can click on none and you can see it's totally black. And of course, if you like to have a gradient on the background, you can also use this. And uh, this can come in very handy if you're trying to create more like a matte mask, especially if you like to mask this in Photoshop or something. And if you would like to just simply have this as uh, none of these. And by the way, you can also use this to flip around, you know, how you like your background to look like or the gradient within your background to look like. And if you like to just load in an image, you can click on image and uh, load in an image or you can just simply use a simple white and this is going to make for a good mask but then let's go back to what we have as the hdri and then talk about how you load in textures and the beautiful thing is uh once you go over to where you have as properties you can see that we have the entire property of this particular model that deals with the material so in this case we can click on the plus sign to load in a new material click on load new map click on the diffuse click on open and you can see that there now if we like to load in maybe like the base normal you can click on that click on normal and add this here now you also notice that within what we have here as the maps that we're supposed to have some emissions and right over here we don't have that emission map and how you can load this is also very simple by clicking on the drop down button, click on the plus sign within the emission map, load, and then you can load the emission and load this in. So very cool and easy. And uh, I think this is definitely going to be very useful for those who just want to hit render. You just want to render stuff. You don't want to deal with all the technicalities. You need something that is pretty quick, fast, and easy to work with. And you want to get your presentation up and running. A tool like this will definitely come in very, very handy. So we're also going to switch this all the way back so that we don't have that back plate. And in this sense, we're also going to go ahead and load up the textures for the weapons. Now, if you're also looking at how the camera actually looks, you can go over to the view section where you can play with the camera settings that deals with the depth of field. And at the same time, you can also play with the turntable animation. And uh, these two can come in extremely handy. So in this case, we can, you know, just get a turntable animation if you like to render this out. You can also choose to render it out and really quick, really fast, no technical know-how, and you're just good to go. You can also go over to the swing section and uh, you can also have that swing, you know, go up and down, go back and forth. And this can also come in extremely handy. And of course, you can also notice that right here, you can make changes to number of frames, the rotation, every single thing you want to do. Extremely easy, extremely clean. For the rendering, you can also play with the rendering and you can see you have basically almost everything you need to get that cool rendering going on. So in this case, if we would like to have some bloom, we can just throw in some bloom right there and uh, simply watch this happen. And all these things are definitely things you're going to get for post-process. And if you like to get some denoising, you can turn on the denoising and uh, you can get some real-time denoising going on. You know, just lots of cool things. If you like to throw in some watermarks, you can go over to the custom section, load up a watermark. Meanwhile, if you also like to add extra emitters, I seem to have forgotten this one, you can click on the add emitter section and you can play with the emitters. Like uh, you would like to add some extra light, you know, you can throw in that light there. You can play with the color of the light. So in this case, let's say we we'll like this to be a bit yellowish, maybe bluish. You know, you like to style this, give it some looks. You can also choose to do that. So I can click on this button. And uh, we can go all the way and uh, set this all the way to green. You know, you can go in, make some changes, tweak this however you want, make this invisible if you like it, make it visible, delete this if you want. And you have all these things at your beck and call. So this is more like it. For those who like to take a look at light trace renderer, link to this is going to be in the description that can bring you right over here where you can see this intuitive rendering tool that can get you your renders really quick with little to no technical know-how as you can start making some very interesting and beautiful stuff for yourself. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.